Hello ladies and gentlemen, I'm doing this video for a YouTube uh, follower and a friend. Um, and uh, his name is Steve, I'm just going to leave it at that. He asked me about what I thought about deliverance ministries, if I felt that they were of God or if I felt that they were satanic uh, or somewhere in between really. Uh, and so that's what this video is going to be about, deliverance ministries. Sorry, I'm un unkept and unshaven. Uh, it's been quite a couple of weeks. The devil tried to kill me in a car accident a couple of weeks back. Wound up having a head-on collision uh, with another car at about 45 or 50 miles an hour and totaled my car. It's put me in a situation where I can't work, so finances are a bit tight. So I've been under a lot of stress, uh, a lot of... A lot of uh, physical stress, uh, uh, some emotional and, uh, and mental, trying to give it to the Lord. Uh, I know He's got me. I know one way or another things will work out because all things work together for good to those who love the Lord and are called according to His purpose. Uh, and He definitely did save me from being snuffed out two weeks ago or so. And the fact that I'm walking and not paralyzed or anything like that and not dead. Although, I mean, if I departed, I'd be with the Lord. But uh, I'm glad that he uh, chose in his infinite grace and wisdom and mercy to extend me more time on this earth. And hopefully I can utilize that time with his help to be of some help to other people. Anyway, so I'm going to read you just a little bit uh, from, math, or from Mark. Excuse me. Uh, this is Jesus... Uh, commissioning the disciples to go out and he said go out and go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature uh, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved but he that believeth not shall be damned and these signs shall follow them that believe these signs shall follow them that believe not just the original 12 that he sent out but anyone who believes these signs shall follow them who believe in my name they shall cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongues, they shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and the sick shall recover. One of the very first things that it says we would do is we would cast out de devils, which is a large part of why people wind up getting addictions uh, and diseases in the first place they're not just organically grown although quite a few are but in many cases they're put upon the sicknesses are put upon people um the accidents like for my accident i i knew dang good and well the devil tried to kill me but god said not today satan and praise the lord and i thank him for his mercy but uh one of the things that we would do is cast out devils. This would fall into the department of delivering, delivering ministry. Also laying on the hands of the sick and they will recover. Um, but notice, if you go a little further past, uh, past uh, Matthew 16, 18, uh, where Jesus said, you may lay hands on the sick and the sick will recover, it goes on to say, so then after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. And they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. Amen. Now, so one of the things <clears throat> uh, that we have to understand is that we have a real enemy here who produces false lying signs and wonders. In fact, in fact, we're told that Satan himself masquerades as an angel of light. And therefore, we shouldn't be surprised if his ministers also do the same. That, he will, that they, they will masquerade as ministers of righteousness, but they'll preach a false righteousness. How do you know whether or not... Or Well, first off, let's answer this question. Does God have deliverance ministries? The answer to that is a resounding yes. He commissioned us to go out and cast out devils, to speak with new tongues, to take up serpents. Uh, literally, that's another sign or another 
another analogy to uprooting strongholds, taking up serpents, speaking with new tongues, not speaking anymore the way the world speaks about things, but speaking the words of faith, the words of God over situations. Um, and of course, the more you're in the Word of God and the more it renews your mind, the more you will speak with new tongues. It's not just talking about speaking in tongues as the Pentecostals might know it. Um, not even uh, sure what to even think of that personally. Um, I do believe there are there are prayer languages uh, and whatnot, but but there's also f fake prayer languages and mu much of the the to do about that kind of stuff in the church today are largely sham, uh, smoke and mirrors, and largely fake. Uh, but there's also authentic, and that's the thing. This is why we have to have the spirit of discernment. But here's one of the big keys when it comes to delivery ministries. It will always be, uh, be pointing to Christ. Um, notice it says that these signs, uh, signs were following them when they went out everywhere and preached the gospel. Uh, God was working with them and confirming the word with which they were preaching, the gospel message that Jesus died for our sins according to the scriptures, was buried and then rose again the third day according to our, the scriptures for our justification. That message, and by faith on that message, you are saved. That message was being preached and God with signs following. God created the signs following, which is deliverance, and it's confirming the gospel message. If you are in a situation where you have this delivery ministry, but there's no gospel message to the lost, and I'm not talking about repent of your sins, I'm talking repent of your unbelief that Jesus paid it all, that he is your only hope of salvation, and apart from him you can do nothing, and that you have no righteousness to bring to the table ever. Nothing that you do, all of what he did. But the message but the cross is not being preached, the true gospel message, but yet you're seeing signs and wonders uh, in, you know, in this delivery and this deliverance ministry. It's very, very likely, I'm 100% sure it's fake because God will move where his word is being preached in truth. So... He uses the works, he uses the signs as a confirmation for what is being preached, number one. Number two, if you notice that these deliverance ministries or prophetic ministries or whatever they happen to be are putting the onus on the prophet or the deliverance minister rather than on Christ if, if, if the person is getting the glory and getting the accolades and, be, and, and be getting put on the pedestal and Christ is not being put on the pedestal, it is automatically a false deliverance ministry. It is also automatically a false prophetic ministry, even if their prophecies are exceedingly accurate. Keep in mind, Satan has real power. And he masquerades as an angel of light. And we shouldn't be surprised that his ministers will do the same. For everything that God does, Satan has a counterfeit. And one of the big ways you tell whether it's from Satan or from God is who does it glory, glorify? Who gets the credit? Who's lifted up in it? Is Christ magnified and glorified? Or is the minister magnified and glorified? In truth, many false teachers and preachers have gone out into the world and they'll come to you in the name of Jesus. They'll use his name. But are they really glorifying him or are they glorifying themselves? Is it really about him or is it really about, oh, look at me, world. I am a chosen vessel of God. Come on, people. Use your brain. Every true believer who is trusted on Christ 
has the same Holy Spirit dwelling inside of them. They don't need any man to teach them, for the Comforter has been given to them who will guide them into all truth and who will remind them of what the Lord has said. Of course, by being in the Word, it will help to, to hone your or temper your senses to discern good from evil and you'll be able to recognize it easier but the Holy Spirit's there to talk to you and to reveal to you. And if you get a check in your spirit about it, perhaps you should step, step away and ask the Lord, is this a real ministry of you or is this a deception from the enemy? The enemy is very subtle and he is very crafty and he is very skilled. Trust me, if it isn't a good lie, it isn't from the devil. The devil is a master, not, not a master, he is the master liar. He is the master deceiver. Uh, so therefore you need to pray for the spirit of discernment on these things because God does have the authentic where he is delivering people uh, from various bondages through deliverance ministries, genuine ministries of the Lord uh, and healings and whatnot. And then you have fake healings. Uh, which will tend to reverse themselves. If the devil did it, it'll tend to reverse itself eventually. But when God gives you healing, it's a done deal. Uh, he doesn't take it back. It's a gift. Uh, and you ain't going to have that, that particular disease come back up on you, uh, no matter what. Um, but what does it also say in the, church, in the scriptures? Uh, it says, uh, is there any sick among you? Have them call the elders of the church together. Now the elders mean not, it's not a political position. It is the mature ones in the faith. And I just want to give a caveat out here so you understand. A mature one can be 90 years old. Or it can be, or that mature one, the elder of the church could be seven years old. The mature ones in faith in Christ. Okay, the mature ones in the faith. Faith alone on Christ alone. And if it's a little seven-year-old little girl or boy who has great faith, better for them to pray for you than some person back over there in the corner that's 45, 50 years old who has no faith at all. Or very little faith. So the mature ones of the faith is what the elders of the church are. The mature ones in the faith. And have the elders, uh, you know, call the elders together, the mature ones of the faith, and have them pray the prayer of faith over him. Uh, and the prayer of faith shall save the sick. And if they have committed any sin, they shall be forgiven him. It's what the word of God says. But yes, the deliverance ministries and the prophetic ministries are still very much alive and real in the body of Christ but you have to have discernment from God's Spirit and you get that honed by studying his word so you recognize his voice when he's talking to you um, and last but not least and this is a big one just surface level uh, who does it point to does it point to the deliverance minister does it point to the prophet or prophetess does it put them on the pedestal or does it put Christ squarely on that pedestal? Is it all about Christ or is it all about the ministry and the minister? If it's about the ministry and the minister. Run, flee from that place. Have no fellowship with them. Their interest is not of God or of Christ, but of men and of themselves. Anyway, that's all I had to say about that. Um, leave your comments down below if you have anything else you'd like to add to help Steve along to hash through this issue of, 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 of deliverance ministries. Um, I thank you all for listening. I hope this has blessed other people besides just Steve. But yeah, the ministry, uh, the deliverance ministries are still very real. There is God's authentic deliverance ministries. But then again, Satan has his counterfeits. 
and they are rife in today's world. You'll know them by who they truly glorify and who is on that pedestal. Who gets glory for it? Does God get glory or do they get glory? And you'll also know by the Holy Spirit that God has given you, the moment you put your faith on Christ and you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, he'll guide you into all truth. And as you're in his word, it, which is the truth, uh, you will be sharpening your senses to discern good from evil. And you'll begin to, able to be, be able to recognize it easier and easier the more you're in his word. Anyway, I hope that helps you, Steve, and I hope that helps someone else out there as well. Thanks for listening. God bless.